All right guys, welcome back to the channel. So today's video, we're gonna be tuning on this 2008 Chevy Trailblazer SS. This truck was originally equipped with the LS2. It is now equipped with an LS3. It's got an aftermarket camshaft, aftermarket torque converter, aftermarket injector. So let's go ahead and get this thing inside and get it running. So let's check out under the hood before we make our base file. We just need to clarify that all the fundamentals are known values to us. It now has an LS3. This LS3 was pulled from a 2012 model C6 Corvette. It actually is still equipped with the C6 oil pan, so we shouldn't have any oil starvation issues on this thing. Customer wanted just a good daily driver kind of camshaft. They installed a BTR truck Norris cam. Still has the TBSS style intake, but this is obviously for a square port head. Stock throttle body. This actually has the earlier style map sensor. Cold air inductions intake. It's got long tube headers, true dual exhaust with an X pipe and flow masters. This thing has some DW 50 pound injectors. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop on DW's website. We're gonna download their plug and play injector data and then we'll get all that loaded in and get this thing fired up and ready to roll. All right, so now that we know what our fundamentals are, which is we are using the original map sensor for the vehicle. It is an LS3 engine, so 6.2 liter. And we have the DW 50 pound injectors. That's the stuff we need to focus on first. Anytime you're building a base file for a vehicle, you always want to make sure you focus on your fundamentals. So we know with this camshaft, as you guys have seen in my other videos, that we're going to have to idle it up. We'll have to add a little bit of base running airflow. But for the most part, this thing should actually be able to be really easy to get started up and running. We've got the tune file opened up, so let's go ahead on and start from the beginning. So we're going to click engine. We'll go to general. So the first thing we're going to look at is our cylinder volume. So right now, this cylinder volume is, is set to 0.75. Um, which if you multiply that times eight, you end up with six liters. So just, we can just pull up our calculator real quick if you wanna do it that way. So you go to tools calculator, 6.2 liters divided by eight equals 0.775. So we need to enter that into cylinder volume. The reason why we do that is our cylinder air mass, which is basically what runs the entire, you know, spark table, just, uh, uh, it's the calculation that the ECU uses for the majority of how it runs is all based off of cylinder air mass. And in order for it to be able to calculate cylinder air mass, it has to first know cylinder volume. So we wanna make sure that's correct. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our idle. Again, this thing has a truck Norris camshaft. So we know that we need to idle this thing up. It does have an aftermarket torque converter in here, but just, just to get it up and going, we're just gonna add 200 RPM to this. We're gonna go under startup and we're gonna add 200 RPM to this as well. Go to start up in gear, add 200 RPM to this. We're gonna go to minimum set point and we're gonna add 200 RPM to this. As you guys can see, that's you kind of got the gist of what I'm doing. We're adding 200 RPM to everything. We wanna make all our changes global. Um, so the next thing we're gonna need is we're gonna need some base running airflow. So we're gonna go to base running airflow, airflow final minimum. And for this camshaft combination, I'll obviously tune this table, but I'm just wanting to show you guys what it looks like to build a base file. So let's just add, I don't know, let's add five. So we're at five and this is, I'm adding five grams per second. So we're gonna add that. Um, and then we can just interpolate over so you can just click and highlight. And basically we, we know that at higher RPM, it's gonna need a little bit more airflow. Um, so we're gonna go 800 to 2000 and we're gonna interpolate between horizontal bounds. Um, same thing with fifth gear. Let's go over to 3000, we'll interpolate. Sixth gear, we'll interpolate and just work our way down. Part neutral, let's actually just add the five to this. Again, this is not, this is, we're just getting this thing running for right now. This will not be my final setup. Startup airflow, we can just add, let's add three grams per second to it. Next thing we're gonna need to do is our cranking VE. Now, obviously with larger camshaft, our volumetric efficiency is gonna be lower at lower RPMs. So until we get our VE table dialed, which I will do, but until we do that, let's just go in and just click cranking VE. Right now it's set to 100. Let's just make this 80. So the next thing we're going to want to do is let's go to fuel general stoic and this truck is running on pump gas pump gasoline that's 10 percent ethanol so we're going to use 14.08 for our stoic it's some guys will use 14.08 some guys will use 14.1 sometimes some guys will use 14.12 around here our average is 9.8 percent so now we need to go to our injector flow rate so we're going to go on to dw's website which I already have pulled dw will send you a flow report and they'll also give you a qr code to scan so you can just scan this and it'll pull up your injector data but we have part number 16u-00-0050-8 you'll see that's right here so if we want to download it we just click right here 
and now it's downloaded. So we can open this thing up into Microsoft Excel. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on our offset. And in order to do so, we're gonna to have to make sure that the axis actually matches what we have. So we're, to find offset, we're gonna scroll down. You will see offset versus pressure versus ignition volts. And you will notice that these, there's two different styles for the E38. You'll have one where all the numbers end in eight, and then you'll have one where all the numbers don't end in eight. Um, so just remember the 128 and the 144. So we're gonna scroll down until we see the 128, 144. So you'll notice how this one ends in all the eights and this one is 128, 144. So we're gonna come over here and we're gonna highlight and copy this and we're gonna do this to the whole table. So control C to copy, go over to our tune file, control V to paste. So we're just gonna follow our data in line as it's laid out. So it says GM flow. So we're gonna look for the same axis again. The axis for flow rate is the same as for the offset. So we're, it's gonna be the 128, 144. So we're gonna copy all of this So control C. That's gonna be up here in flow rate versus pressure and control V. So next thing under our data is gonna be our short pulse adder. So we need to look for, you'll notice there's two tables here, one that go zero, then 0.6, then 0.12. Next one is zero, then 1.125 and 0.250. So we need to match this up. So it's gonna be right here, short, short pulse adder. And you're gonna notice how it actually goes with the one that's the 1.25 and the, and the 0.250. So we're gonna copy this and we're gonna paste this in our table. And so the next thing is gonna be our minimum injector pulse. So you'll notice that minimum injector pulse is 0 0.7250. Now, a lot of times when you try to enter that value into the tables, it may not let, it may not be exact. So just type it. So 0 0.725 and you'll notice how it ended up going up to 0 0.725. 727 that is 100 percent okay so that is our injector data done it doesn't give us anything else that we need to change so we will close that out so again we're just trying to get this thing running so i'm just going to run through my head real quick and think of what we need to change we really don't need to change anything else honestly this thing should light off let's just call this save as key on the truck and load it in we don't need to write the transmission now again, I knew the map sensor data was original, but the map sensor data is another critical one that you need to verify and make sure. Also, you need to take a look at your mass airflow sensor configuration. If you have the stock style math, which this one does, the stock math table will be sufficient for right now. If it does have like a four inch tube with like an LS7 math, basically you can fail the vehicle and get it into speed density, which I've showed you guys in other videos. Or if you just want to rough it in, just highlight your, take your whole mass airflow sensor table highlight it all and just type in like a multiplier of like 1.75 and multiply because we'll just we'll just say it's roughly almost double so you know 75 percent more grams per second at that same frequency and that should get the vehicle running as well but again this one's stock math and stock map sensor so this thing should fire right off all right so i'm gonna key it off and let's start it up So you'll notice she lit right off, idling rock solid, nothing crazy going on. Now this truck is, again, this is a used engine, but he's going through this thing with gaskets. It's got fresh spark plugs. I mean, it was pretty much ready to go. So let's go and get logged in the truck and see where we're at. Where we're at. As I'm scanning my gauges right now, vehicle's charging, oil pressure looks good. I did already have a, a base file. This vehicle actually was able to drive here. So I put it back to stock when I backed it inside the, the shop and then we just did our base file. So this thing has ran and it is, I think it's somewhat warmed up right now. Just wanted to do that for you guys, just that way you can understand to not be overwhelmed when you're wanting to start your vehicle up. Like as long as you look at the basics and you just think about what you've changed and just make some small changes, the vehicle's gonna start and run okay. So as of right now, as we're looking, you'll notice how the mass airflow sensor is, is pretty far off from the volumetric efficiency. That's okay, that's because this thing is, obviously it's running on stock math table and stock V table at the moment. As we're looking through, everything looks good so far. So short-term fuel trims, nothing crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's idling rock solid. that's going to conclude today's video i wanted to show you guys what it takes to actually get a pretty healthy little engine combo fired up and running on your own no tuner involved just you guys using your own laptops and just a little bit of common sense you can get your own personal project up and running so obviously the next video i'm going to back this thing up and get it up on the dyno 
but I just figured this would be a cool little segment of just doing a part one video of getting the thing running, and then the next one's gonna be more into the performance and dialing the thing in. So thanks for the likes, the subscriptions, the comments. You guys have been all absolutely awesome. Um, but I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video.